industries have seen amazing technological advances in the last 10 years, more than the previous 90. Now, the phone in your pocket can do more than a camera that cost thousands of dollars just a few years ago. And as a culture, we have embraced this technology, with millions of YouTube users uploading thousands of videos every minute, instantly creating millions of new filmmakers. While these may not be all masters in the art form, they do share a common thread. Individual perspective. And it's the ability to share your perspective, voice your opinion, and tell a story that draws us to filmmaking. It's the human interest and insight into how someone else lives, thinks, or reacts that keeps us curious as an audience. Now for most of us in this room, being connected is normal, if not necessary. But in this cloud-connected world, some of the most important voices aren't heard, and it's easy for us to forget about those that live without. When you start thinking about the democratization of the medium and the availability of technology, the question becomes, why can't those without have a voice? So five months ago, I teamed up with the Center for Youth to make a different kind of film. While we wanted to end with a finished product, our goal was to use the filmmaking process as a way to potentially inspire and motivate. Instead of making a documentary about those that the Center for Youth served, what if we let them share their perspectives and tell their stories? So seven young men and I embarked on this journey. We received funding from AT&T to make it a summer job and pay them a small stipend, and we loaned older cameras from RIT. They took these cameras home with them and filmed their lives. We met twice a week, sometimes discussing the material they captured, sometimes going out and filming together. They interviewed each other and led the direction of the project. And they did all of this under one condition, that it be real. Now, before I show you a little of what they created and hopefully give you some insight into their reality, I want to share something with you that isn't in the film. My perspective. Over these last five months, I was exposed to the remarkable and resilient people that these men were on a daily basis. The excitement they showed after capturing something great, or the pride they had for feeling like they belonged to something bigger, was an amazing thing to witness. And for the first time, I stepped away from the camera and connected on a level that was deeper than the art. You know, when I started this project, I thought I would be the one teaching. But what I learned from this experience and the reward I received from seeing others spark a passion in the medium that I love was far greater than any film I have ever made. So I urge you, step away from the camera. Step away from the computer. Step away from the laboratory. Step away from the studio. Step away from the obvious and share your passion with others. Not those that seek you out, but those who don't know you exist. Those who don't yet know what is possible because they can't look past today to dream about tomorrow. There are great thinkers, developers, and artists in this world that don't yet know what their potential is. It is our job to show them what they're capable of. And this, this call to action, we'll call it, is inspired by a question that one of the young men asked me. He said, where I'm from, the best way to make it out is as a rapper or an athlete. What happens when I'm neither? I'm proud to present a shorter TED version of If Our Streets Could Talk. Ah, oh, man. Where do I start? Shit, um... Basically... Life is a struggle. Sometimes you ain't gonna have food. I, I've done that a lot. Sometimes you ain't gonna always have, you know, food in your stomach. Sometimes, like, your mom gonna go to sleep and walk around hungry because she gotta feed you up. Where I come from, I want everything because nothing is really given. And then it's, it's, it's wants and needs because on top of my wants is stuff that I really needed and stuff that I just didn't have access or I didn't have funds, like my mom was a single parent. She raised three kids on her own. I gotta worry about how I'm gonna get to point A to point B. 
how I'm going to survive. I'm struggling just like you. You feel me? Doing the same shit you do is just in a different perspective. It may be wrong for you, but you're not in my shoes, so you don't know what I got to do. You don't know how I got to live. So if I'm doing something, it's probably for my survival. You don't, you don't know what I'm doing it for. I don't, don't know where to go, who to turn to. Don't know if your family going to accept you, and if they do, only for how long before you, don't do, before you do some shit to piss them off or irritate them. That shit, man. Struggle's real. That's not nothing fun, man. The struggle is crucial. <laughs> it's like in the hood, we got more to lose. Because we put everything on the line, like I said, just to maintain. Like, we put our lives on the line just to get out there and get something to eat just for the day. You know, we got all these other struggles and stuff going on in, in the main priorities that you have be the ones that's prepared for the future, but you don't really be worried about them too much because you got to be worried about what's going on right now. Because in the hood, that's how it got to be. You can't really have no plans in the hood because it's like once you, once you set some shit in stone, something always go wrong in the hood because the environment just so unstable. And it, it's really hard. It's like hard people to understand because some people get grown up into being having a good life and having financially being set, whereas there's some people that's born into to not having anything and have to figure out ways on their own to live, just living. That's life though. Which ways I can, you know, do something to boost up my self-esteem <laughs> to be somebody out here. So many things pull you opposite ways of what you should be doing, so. I really started hanging in the streets and getting affiliated with gangs and stuff and out on the corners and stuff. I would say I was about 13. That's, that's, that's just exactly what, that's what it is. <laughs> 20 days that I could have been dead right now, in jail, not at home, feel me? I was supposed to graduate when I was 16. I had the knowledge and the ability to do so. But instead, being born in poverty, you slip up. Watch out for yourself, too, because you could be your own worst enemy. Get out of lock up, back doing the same thing, going back to court again, sit back in lock up, placement, all that, I done been through all that, man. I feel like can't be touched. But now as you look at it, it's like, as my years went on, I lost two, two of my closest friends when I was locked up and it affected me. Like, you keep going down the road, you go down, you can be going anytime. Now it's like I have a niece and for me to still do what I used to do, it might affect her, but it'll hurt me more because I won't be able to tell her nothing. So now I have a niece, I enjoy my time, love my life even better. Now I see something that I should have seen long ago. If I'd have seen it long ago, I probably would have been in a predicament where I was hurt, didn't care, lost my friends, to a point where just everything fell. Five days ago, he had my I watched cousin. the birth of my first child, which is my daughter. How I'm gonna survive. How my daughter gonna survive. So, like right now, my future goal is to make sure that my daughter ain't never gonna be hungry. I want her to have her dad at all her games and all the things that she do, cheerleading, whatever the case may be. I want her to have her dad present. I didn't have that. I had to make a change for myself. I didn't want to become that bum on the street. I didn't want to become that person who just smokes weed all day, is on the street drinking. Like my father, he's an alcoholic. I didn't want to become that man. I wanted to become my own man, my own self. For them five years, I wasted five years of my life smoking and not giving a fuck. It's either drop out or do better. And I wasn't about to drop out because if I would have dropped out, I would have had nowhere to stay. And drop out is not an option. I was no education. I was 19 years old. It's understanding when people have time for it. 
sometimes people don't be having time to understand the things that they, they go through. They just go through it and they misunderstand it and they feel like they're going through it for no reason when it's a reason for everything. Remember that. It just happened. I wasn't really paying attention to my life and my outcome and my future. I, me I messed up so much. It's like, when when is the point of no return? Like, when is the point where you say like, damn, I really, right, like, like, when you really can't correct your mistakes no more. I felt like dropping out. I'm not even gonna lie. I, I felt as though like, I was never gonna get my high school diploma. I was like, it was too late. Like, what was the point of fighting for something that I'm not gonna receive? Two young men who had been involved with one of our programs came to me with a beautifully written proposal asking me, requesting, actually sort of begging me to think about starting our own school program. Um, they were convinced that so many young men who had not been successful in a traditional school setting would do so much better if we could offer a program through the Center for Youth. That was the beginning of New Beginning. It was like three years ago, I decided to come to New Beginnings and basically get my high school diploma and change my life. It's better late than never, man. It's for them to make, you know, make a difference in their lives, you know what I'm saying? That's what it is, it's called New Beginnings, that's all. A big factor would be uh, the Center for Youth being in partnership with it because you could always go and get help from the center. Like, I, it's never a time where I got turned down by the center when I needed anything. I felt like this was the last alternative for me to uh, succeed in graduating. Then I just started, feel me, it started getting easier. My grade, I went from a 0, 0.0 average, I, then it just started going up. I went from a 0 0.64 to a 2.87 in one marking period. Came in fresh, first marking period, honor roll. Second marking period, honor roll. Third marking period, honor roll. <laughs> me being who I am, I would never think that I would be able to, you know, get that far in school on, on a regular basis, going to school every day, doing my work, busting my work down, you know, when I finally got that honor roll, it was like, oh, that real I Immediately, I, I called my mom and told her, and she was like, oh, my baby, that's good. See, you're making a change. You live and prove. You got to live by example, so I'm showing. When I walk that stage, they're going to be there, and they're going to see what it means. I'm the first to graduate from high school out of my immediate family. And it, I'm the only person that made it. So when I made it, it's, it's like she made it, my sisters made it, it gave hope. It gave, that, it gave that energy that we really needed, that positive energy that like, yeah, I should go back to school and try to get some education. I'm living proof basically of my age group that we can make it and we can make a change. I made it, yo. A lot of people can't say that. I ain't gonna say I, I made it completely, but I, I'm first big step. And I'm trying to like really make my life better than what it would have been if I would have continued on that path. That was type inspiring. I see Bobby 21, I'm only 16. Like, yeah, I could finish this. Bobby did it, I could do this, man. So the cycle, the cycle of me is, I could. I was supposed to be a street, I was supposed to be a drug dealer, I was supposed to be on the streets. I'm supposed to always stay in poverty. I'm supposed to, that's not my cycle. Not no more. On the road to graduate this year, you know, and I'm very proud of myself. For every person that I went to middle school with that died or in prison right now or just didn't make it, we made it. We made it. They don't need any introduction because you know them. But Bobby, Damien, and uh, you know, we just want to thank you uh, for letting us share our perspective. And more than that, boys, you got anything? Uh, I just want to uh, say thank you for giving me this time, this opportunity to share my story with you guys. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>